Good morning, dear children, our participants, our um, guests from other schools, our judges, and um, a very, very warm welcome to this very, very prestigious uh, debate. The most beautiful part about this debate is that it is held on the same day all over the country. And uh, the kind of um, finesse that is observed in the Frank Anthony debate makes it so very remarkable. So it is an honor that all of you participants are chosen by your respective schools to be a part of uh, the Frank Anthony All India debate. The topic for um, this debate today is something that brought a smile on the faces of all of us uh, older generation, but I'm sure you youngsters are all finding it very topical and uh, are in sync with the topic. I will leave the speaking of the topic to and the introduction to our um, moderator, but um, we have the introductions of the judges. Wish you all the best. God bless you. And let's uh, witness excellent debating uh, prowess by all of you. God bless you. Good morning to one and all present here. In all debates, let truth be thy aim, not victory or an unjust interest. We welcome you all to be a part of the Frank Anthony debate competition. As you are aware that this debate is for category two, that is the ICSC students. We have in all nine schools who will compete amongst each other for the awards and prizes. The winning team and the first runner-up team will go to the second round of the competition, that is the selection stage. Dear friends, the Frank Anthony debate is a very prestigious debate initiated in the name of Mr. Frank Anthony. Now, I request Niona to deliver an introduction on the life of Mr. Frank Anthony. Thank you, Dhruv. Mr. Frank Anthony was a many-faceted person, educationist, lawyer, parliamentarian, and a prominent leader of the Anglo-Indian community. He was born in Jabalpur on 25th September 1908. He was educated at Nagpur University, where he received the Viceroy's Gold Medal. He then went on to study law at the Inner Temple in England, from where he was called to the bar. On his return to India, Mr. Anthony successfully fought many legal battles, especially safeguarding the rights of minorities. His most significant contribution was in the field of education. In 1942, he was elected chairman of the Interstate Board for Anglo-Indian Education. As an educationist, Mr. Anthony is best remembered for his proposal to establish an alternate board to the senior Cambridge examination. Thus, the Council for the Indian School Certificate Examinations came into being. Mr. Anthony was in fact the founder chairman of the Council for the Indian School Certificate Examinations from 1958 to 1993. Mr. Anthony was a member of the Constituent Assembly and the Drafting Committee and was entrusted with the task of writing a new constitution of free India. His seminal book, Britain's Betrayal in India, the story of the Anglo-Indian community is an excellent chronicle of the Anglo-Indian community, the struggles and challenges it faced in pre-independent India and in free India. He was nominated as a representative of the Anglo-Indian community in the Lok Sabha from the 1st till the 10th, except the 6th and the 9th Lok Sabhas. This annual debate competition has thus been appropriately named after Mr. Frank Anthony. He was an eloquent speaker. His spirited arguments during his legal battles, his speeches in Parliament, and his writings are memorable. I now hand over the mic back to Dhruv. Thank you, Niona. I would now like to call upon Kresha to introduce the judges. 
Now, we would like to introduce our esteemed judges who will decide who will be the winners of this event. I would like to introduce our first judge, Mrs. Ranjini Krishnaswamy. She is a founder of founder principal of St. Gregorius High School and Bilabong High International School, Thane. She is an educational consultant assisting schools to excel. She has also been playing a role of a teacher trainer very effectively. We welcome you, ma'am. Our second judge is Mrs. Shweta Praharaj. She is currently working as senior, senior manager with Siemens Limited, an electrical and software multinational headquarter in Germany. She is passionate about technology and has led several projects of automation, building management dashboards, digitalization, artificial intelligence projects, etc. She has studied her bachelor's in commerce from the illustrious Ravenshaw College. She was, has done her bachelor's of law and is a registered life member of the Odisha High Court. She has undergone a sponsored certificate course of business administration from SIES College, Nerul, Mumbai. Our third judge is Mrs. Shija Varghese. She has been in the profession of teaching for 32 years. She has done her master's in chemistry, working as a teacher and lecturer in various colleges and schools. She has held responsible posts of principal, vice principal, and supervisor in various schools. She's a dedicated educator with extensive experience in developing the curriculum. Let us give a round of applause for our judges. Now, I would like to hand over the mic back to Dhruv. Thank you, Krisha. Now, we would like to introduce the moderator for today's debate, Mrs. Chandra Karki. Mrs. Chandra Karki is a... Mrs. Chandra Karki is a dedicated and student-focused teaching professional who is committed to providing a well-balanced, supportive, and an engaging learning environment for students. A postgraduate in bioinformatics from Bioinformatics Institute of India, graduate in zoology from Pune University, and Bachelor of Education from Mumbai University. Mrs. Chandra Karki has a teaching experience of over nine years with one year in IGCSC and eight years in ICSC. She is currently teaching mathematics and chemistry to the ninth and tenth grade students of Hiranandani Foundation School, Thane. I request Chandra ma'am to proceed with the program. Thank you, Dhruv. Good morning and a warm welcome on behalf of Hiranandani Foundation School, Thane, to the Frank Anthony Memorial All India Inter-School Debate Competition 2023. Frank Anthony debate is one of the most prestigious inter-school annual debates, seeing a participation of over 1,600 schools each year. It stands out from other debate competitions because of its highly competitive and elitist judge edge that tests the skill of students. So dear audience, we have amongst us 18 elite speakers representing nine ICSC schools from Mumbai. I welcome all the participants and a big round of applause for all the participants here today. For the purpose of absolute fairness, names of the schools have not been disclosed and the school teams have been assigned different names. I request the participants to raise their hand while I introduce them to the judges and the audience. Representing Team Shelley is Prisha Singh and Vabhuvi Venkateswaran. Thank you. From Team Keats, we have Hantra Zaveri and Lakshita Peswani. Thank you. Team Tagore, represented by Pulkit Agarwal and Risha Jain. Thank you. From Team Whitman, we have Soha Shah and Arush Agarwal. Representing Team Tennyson is Ashwarya Ayer and Ishwari Sogalan. Thank you. 
From Team Frost, we have Nana Nandwani and Yuvir Mulchandani. Thank you. Team Hadi, Arjun Patel, and Samaira Rilkar. Thank you. From Team Arnold, Vedahi Borkar and Dhe Tankaria. Thank you. And representing Team Dylan is Ribu Mishra and Pradyum Singhi. Thank you. Now moving on to the debate. The topic for the debate was sent to the school in a sealed envelope. The envelope was opened this morning in the presence of the principal and the participants. Thus, the topic for debate was announced one hour before the commencement of the debate. The participants had one hour for the preparation and were given access to the books and periodicals in the school library. The use of internet and any electronic gadgets were not allowed. Each team was free to decide the speaker for the proposition and the opposition. Moving to the rules, participants must announce if the argument is in favor or against the motion at the start of their speech. Speakers are not allowed to read out from prepared text and if found reading out from a paper will be penalized. Participants should desist from using unparliamentary language during the debate. Each speaker will be given four minutes to speak. A short warning bell will be rung, one at the end of three minutes, and two quick bells in succession will be rung at the end of four minutes. Anything spoken after four minutes will not be considered. After each speaker finishes the speech, two minutes will be allotted for rebuttal. Now this rebuttal will be in the form of short, precise questions asked by the members of the competing teams on the content of the speaker's presentation. Participants speaking for the motion can pose questions only to the participants speaking against the motion and vice versa. I repeat this point. Participants speaking for the motion can pose questions only to the participants speaking against the motion and vice versa. In case no question is asked within 10 seconds, the competitors will be reminded that if no question is asked within next 10 seconds, then full points will be awarded to the speaker. It is noted by the, if it is noted by the participants that cross-questioning of the contestants will not be allowed. The scoring will be in the following format. Content, 15 marks. Argument, rebuttal, 10 marks. Appropriateness of language, 10 marks, delivery, 10 marks, demeanor, poise, stance, 5 marks. The debate is being judged by the very established panel of three judges. Judges' decision will be final under all circumstances. The debate being conducted today is for students of class 10 and below in category 2, stage 1. Certificates of merit will be awarded only to the best speaker, the first runner-up speaker, and the two speakers from the winning school team. Coming to the topic today, it is a very interesting, relevant, relatable topic. And the topic is, Facebook friends have become more real than real friends. I repeat, Facebook friends have become more real than real friends. So we now commence today's deb debate with speakers from our first team, Team Shelley. I, Vaibhavi Venkateshwaran, firmly stand for the topic that states Facebook friends are more real than real friends. What are friends? Friends are those who like us and whom we like. We extend our support, our care, our help towards them and they reciprocate the same for us. So be it online or offline, the nature of our friendship depends on how we interact with them, which is why I'm firmly for this topic. Coming to my first argument, friendship is like a well-watered plant. You must apply equal efforts in order to maintain that friendship. 
in an offline setup you meet your friend every day you talk to them you remember them but an online relationship you have to maintain that relationship you have to put specialized efforts for it so obviously when you put so much effort for it it is a more real friendship than an off offline one my second argument involves an example of the famous stand up comedian arvin essay has anyone heard about his passion for a famous sporting team he applied 2 years constantly to go, get a visa in order to see them play in in the uk he kept getting rejected and his online committee kept getting disappointed with him and after 2 years of waiting time he finally got an opportunity to go there when he announced it to his online community they were so happy they picked him up from the airport they came and provided him with accom accommodation and lodging during his stay there and they accompanied him to the match tell me how many of your real friends would be willing to do so much for you when they live abroad tell me how if this isn't real friendship then what is my third argument revolves around the fact that in an online discussion you don't ever meet the person so the scope of them judging you based on how you present yourself or how you talk and all your insecurities don't come out which is why it's a more real friendship introverts especially and people in general are really nervous about how they present themselves but in an online setup all those fears go away and in life we have to achieve our goals and for the same we must move away from our loved ones we must move to different places and in all of this we move away from familiar faces to faces which we never we never seen in our life it's a psychological fact that in such scenarios we end up forgetting our friends and our, and those whom we interacted with and replace those faces with those whom we see in our day to day lives and online friendship as i mentioned before is a place where we apply specialized efforts to maintain that relationship so if you've been used to talking to that person online for so long and you've not broken your connect with them whether you move to the north pole or the south pole or to america or to the uk or remain where you are you are going to maintain that connect and so that is the most real most true most pure friendship that you will ever find in your life in conclusion real friends are those who love us support us care for us no matter what and if we find that online especially in this growing age of technology and access to internet then definitely your online friends are more real than the fake ones roaming around you thank you thank you Any questions? Yes, Team Anil. How are you so sure that? One minute. How are you so sure that your off uh, online friend or Facebook friend will definitely come um, on your match, and your offline friend wouldn't? Uh, can you repeat your question? How are you so sure that your Facebook friend or online friend will definitely come on your match and none of your offline friends will? Okay, so the match thing was an example and it's not that they will come. The thing is you can trust and support them. In an offline setup, you're constantly thinking, "Oh my god, do they think I'm dressed this way? Oh my god, am I talking too funny?" But with an online setup, you're just texting them and you're more chill with the way you converse so you don't have all insecurity building up and making you nervous. Thank you. Next question we have from Team Dylan. Hello. Uh, if you said that friends, uh, that both sides of friends need to put equal efforts into the relationship, does your stand-up comedian know anything about his friends who came to pick him up? Definitely. They interacted for two years. They spoke so much about their favorite team. They stayed up late at night till three a.m. simply discussing about the different ways in which the uh, game was played. So they clearly know a lot and. Moreover, they offer to provide accommodation, stay, lodging, everything for him. No random stranger who doesn't know enough about you is going to let you in their house. No cross questioning, please. Yes, Team Tennyson. We all can admit that not everything is posted on social media. So, if your friend doesn't know everything about you, how will he be able to comfort you? There is a chance of your online friend not knowing everything about you, but in as you said and not everyone posts everything and it's all based on your trust and how much you, uh, you you have faith in that person with your information and uh most of the cases where i've seen online friends they've they've always spoken in a uh, to people who 
reciprocate. So they will comfort you in a way that most humans sympathize. So you will feel a little better after talking to them. Can we have a question from Keats? In your speech, you mentioned that you know we judge themselves more freely online, but obviously Facebook is a space where you see photos of people which they post only of their picture-perfect best selves. How can you truly judge if a person is worthy of your trust and not that they're faking their identity? There's a certain level of discrepancy on your end as to who you trust and who you don't. And most people do post, like you said, a social media lie. And in most cases, it's, it's easy to find out who is lying and who's not. And if you don't, you're an adult. It's your responsibility who you trust. And if it's a child using social media, it's the guardian's responsibility to check who they're talking to. The second speaker from Team Shelley. Good morning, everyone. My name is Prisha Singh, and I will be speaking firmly against the topic that says Facebook friends are more real than real friends. Firstly, let's define the stance, shall we? Friends are people who you like and people who like you. You simply cannot like someone that you don't know, and you can't know someone unless you've met them in person, unless you've seen what their demeanor is like. Secondly, the definition of what, real, what a real friendship is. A real friendship is a genuine friendship that is not made up or imitated for the sake of materialism. And since the entire concept of social media revolves around the fact that you show off what the best part of your life is, then it is bound to be a materialistic relationship and it cannot be a real relationship. My three points delineate my argument. Firstly, how we must consider the representation of poor people who simply do not have access to internet. Secondly, how random follow requests on the internet simply do not equate to real genuine friendships. And thirdly, how online relationships can never have the same effect as offline relationships. Firstly, quality over quantity. Poor people who barely can afford, uh, people below the poverty line who barely can afford mobile phones, much less internet connection, have no way of connecting to each other over Facebook. They have actual meaningful connections. When they cannot afford something in the market, they help each other out even if they don't have enough themselves. This is what a real friendship entails. Not just pressing a one-click follow request on Facebook so that you can make Facebook friends with someone. Besides, uh, although we can, we can definitely practice verification online, you never really know who the person you're talking through a Facebook screen is. And after all, you can't figure out if a person is inherently good or bad through their Facebook profile. Secondly, the concept of people who are uh, even middle-aged people uh, pretend to be teenagers just to groom people and uh, young children online, which is not safe for kids who do not know what they're dealing with. Facebook friends in such a case cannot properly represent what real friendships entail. You can only have real friendships when you meet someone face to face, when you are in face to face contact with them, and when you give out your deepest secrets. This isn't something you can do online. Besides, the proposition harps upon the fact that Facebook Messenger is the only way you have Facebook friends. Facebook friends is what is defined as giving someone a follow request and it getting a follow request back. It is not just the people which you converse with on Facebook Messenger. And let's be honest, do all of us really know everybody that we follow on Instagram and Facebook? Of course not. We follow people there on the basis of whether you might have heard of them once or whether your friend follows them, not because you actually know the people that you're interacting with. Thirdly, this connection is simply not the same as, as offline connections. Let's take the example of the COVID-19 pandemic, shall we? All of us were in offline school. And can you honestly say that online school was the same thing as actually being inside your school's walls, giggling and laughing with your friends? And in conclusion, in the same way as paperback books can never be completely replaced by Kindles, in the same way online school can never take the place of online, offline school and in the same way that Facebook friends can never actually take the place of real friends, I firmly stand against the motion that Facebook friends are more real than uh, real friends. Thank you, Brisha.
Yes, Team Dylan. Uh, I stand for the motion. I stand for the motion for my team. Uh, I would like to ask you that you said we can interact with our friends and uh, face to face and tell them our deepest secret. The problem with that is many people are not comfortable with sharing uh, things or uh, sharing things face to face, especially their deepest secrets. So, how would you uh, answer that? Well, first of all, if you actually confess someone's deepest secrets with, uh, with someone else, you can do so through text as well. My point is, the friend should not be made over Facebook. You can text them, but the concept of giving out your deepest secrets to someone who you've never actually met and who you've only seen through Facebook or Instagram or any other social media app, which is basically meant just for spreading messages from influencers or organizations to reach out to their followers, that concept just for giving out your deepest secrets to someone you do not know does not make sense. Yes, Team Hardy. Uh, you said something about... Uh, uh, can you please mention whether you are for the motion or against the uh, motion? I am for the motion. For the motion. Uh, so you said something about uh, how we... If we heard of someone, we just follow them. Just to... Like, but the thing is, we are not talking about every Facebook friend being our friend. The question here is... Can we make friendship with a few people who we think we are close to? Is that possible? Well, to be honest, are you actually really, really friends with any, everybody you meet offline as well? My point is, see, when you make someone friends with someone on Facebook, what's the next step? You want to meet them on offline, right? You set up a meet so that you can meet them, which has happened in many instances before. People have started making friends online, but they have, they have shifted, they have transferred to people who have actually met offline, and so that you can figure out what the demeanor of a person is, you can figure out the person is actually who they say they are. And then you form a deeper connection with them. So Facebook friends just meet meeting someone over Facebook, and if that's the only form of contact, I don't think that's uh, what makes a real friend. Anyone else? Team Tagore? Good morning. I'm for the topic, and I want to ask you that you said that choosing friends quality-wise is more better than quantity. Then how can you say that online friends have no quality at all? I'm not saying that online friends do not have quality at all. It's just that, let's be honest, most of us, uh, like follow people on the basis of whether how we can get more followers of online, right? But offline, you don't actually go around just talking to people for the sake of talking to people. You talk to people if you know them, and you talk to people if you want to talk to them, which is not the same case in online where you just post things so that other people can admire and envy your f uh, Facebook friendly life and can like or comment on your posts. Thank you. Team Prost, do you want to ask a question? In your speech, you mentioned that... Uh, are you speaking for the motion? Uh, yes, you against? I am speaking for the motion. My name is Yuvir Muljanani. And uh, my question is, you said it's much tougher online to differ between the morality of a person. But uh, even in real life, how often can you actually determine whether a person is good or bad? Online, you have much more data and much more information about the person in general. So in real life, can you inherently tell good or bad? Well, see, it's actually much, much easier to trust your gut when you see someone in person, right? If online, the only source of information you have is through their Facebook profile, and you claim that you have more information online, but then wouldn't you be stalking them online? And couldn't you do the same thing for an offline friend? And if you're, technically, if you're stalking someone online, would that really make a genuine, real relationship? Would that be a real friendship? Thank you. Thank you, Prisha. That was Team Shelley. I now invite speakers from Team Keats. Good morning, respected judges, teachers, and my fellow students. My name is Hantra Zaveri. I'm from Team Keats. And I stand strongly for the motion that Facebook friends have become more real than our real friends. Times are changing. Society has changed. Social media has become a mainstream method of communication now. And our friends on social media have become more real than our real friends. What is friendship? Friendship is an abstract concept. You can't define it. It's different for everyone. But it's built on one thing, interaction. So let me ask everyone in this room, how do you keep in touch with your friends? Most of us are in 10th standard. 
Most of us have friends that are either younger or older than us, and due to circumstances, we can only keep in touch with them through online means because of the hectic schedule of a student in today. But this doesn't make them any less of our friend. It doesn't make them a fake friend. In fact, it makes them more real because we have common interactions and common experiences. You could load up any video game, any common social platform, and spend 10 minutes talking to one person every day for your whole summer vacation. And by the end of that summer vacation, you will come to me and tell me that person has become my most realest friend. Speaking out about issues that, experience, that affect our real lives, such as psychological issues, trauma, personal issues, relationships, etc., people find it hard to do this with their quote-unquote real friends. But somehow, in online life, it just flows out. If you go and you try to speak to any person in real life for five minutes interrupt, uninterrupted every day, three times a day, you will realize how lucky we are to have a tool such as social media. It is always better to make fast friends than to make friends fast. There's a saying, if you walk four steps with someone, you become their friend. If you spend 48 hours with them, you become family. People will bring up in social media, you become friends the fastest of all. But you have a reason to be a friend. You have common interactions, common experiences. And in my opinion, social media makes friends fast, but social media also makes those friends last. So coming back to the saying that I mentioned, how do you spend 48 hours with someone? It seems like a daunting task, but social media turns this elephant into a kitten. As I said earlier, talk to someone for five minutes every day, three times a day, and you will come to me and tell me social media is the most useful tool you have ever seen in your life. People will bring up cyberbullying, people will bring up online toxicity. But cyberbullying and online toxicity are truly problems when combined with bullying in real life, when combined with mistreatment, harassment, exclusion, things that our quote-unquote real friends do. And then who do we go and talk to about these things? Our quote-unquote less real online friends. Most of us have online friends. Most of us have people who we interact with only online and not in real life. Now you tell me, all your online friends who you consider to be your online friends, you have a reason that they are your friend, don't you? You have common experiences, you have a common goal, a common task, you load up Call of Duty and you play every day, you load up Stumble Guys, you're connected on Instagram, you like photography, you like debating, you like going to model United Nations. You have a clear reason to be a friend. Whereas in real life, you go say hello to someone every day and they start considering you one of their closest friends. In conclusion, I am for the motion, and of course, I would just like to state that it is our relationship and experiences with someone that makes them our real friend, not the mode of communication we use to talk to them. It's all the long video call sessions, all the memes, all the phone calls venting about what XYZ said to ABC that makes someone our real friend. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, dramatic effect. The rebuttal round now, questions? Yes, Team Dylan. I'm against the motion. Don't you also have interactions with real friends in school? And also, can't you spend those 48 hours in school talking to them? Thank you so much for your question. What is the first thing they tell us in school when we talk to someone? Keep quiet. Focus on your studies. You come to school to study. You don't come to school to talk to people and to interact and to socialize. Let's take an example of any ICSE school, okay? 15 minutes short break, 30 minutes lunch break. You're supposed to complete two meals in that time. Now you go and you spend time talking to someone and interacting with them. I'm telling you, you will not get five minutes without someone coming, tapping your shoulder and saying, hey, hey, you have those notes that ma'am gave last week? It is very difficult to spend time with someone uninterrupted with full focus on them and interact with them, understanding them completely in real life. Which is why I strongly believe that online friends are, or Facebook friends are more real than our real friends. Thank you. Any other question? Yes. You said that we have common interactions and common experiences with our online friends. Don't we have common interactions and common experiences with our offline friends as well? Thank you so much for your question. Now, the thing with physical friendships, you all may have experienced this is, you start going to play group with someone, you slowly grow up with them, you go to their house every day, they become your closest friend in real life. Now, slowly, slowly, a thing called puberty will come. It will creep in the middle of the friendship, it will cause cracks. There will be separation, there will be distance. However, with an online friend, if I go and I load up Call of Duty, I don't even know his name, but I message Kitty Lover 64 and I tell him, please hop on a game, let's talk. I have something to tell you. 
he will come he will listen and i will listen to that person's problems and what they are venting but sometimes in real life this doesn't happen we do have common experiences with our friends in real life but let me ask you are those common experiences by choice or are they by force are you coming to school by force or you coming to school to by choice but are you playing call of duty by choice or are you playing call of duty by force <laughs> thank you for your question thank you Thank you, Hantra. Now we have Lakshita from Team Cakes. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lakshita Peswani, and I am from Team Cakes. I am strongly against the motion that Facebook friends have become more real than our real friends. What is a real friendship? Who are our real friends? they are people whom i can count on to be with me through the ups and downs of my life they are people who can take one look at my face and say hey what's going on is something bothering you they are people that i can relate to they are people who are there with me in the best and the worst moments of my life now tell me you're scrolling through facebook can you just look at a bunch of picture perfect photos on social media and say that I think this person needs to be my friend they are very nice every we you know we're open to scru scrutiny on social media we're open to scrutiny everywhere though but still if you are on facebook you will never post anything about your flaws you will never post you know what today i didn't do very good in my test but at the same time your real friends they won't judge you scrutiny on social media is quite often but can you really tell that someone is my real friend that i want to be friends with this person without actually knowing about their flaws doesn't that kind of alienate them from us now then there's the matter of trust all relationships their basis is trust including friendship now imagine i'm on social media i'm scrolling through and someone texts me hi and then we strike up a conversation but how do i for myself know that this person is not just trying to befriend me to take advantage of me how do i know that they are just not trying to befriend me for their own purposes because they have nothing better to do now you know those moments where you see someone in your dance class your singing class and you look at them and you're like hey i have seen you around how's things going and then sudden you strike a conversation with them sudden you make friends with them sudden you start seeing them more often and just like that an everlasting long bond is formed but can you truly say the same about social media is it really that much easier to connect with the person i mean i for myself when i want to make a friend i would like to sit down and meet a person face to face i can judge them it's not only what they say that makes me decide whether or not they want to be my friend it makes me decide is how what their attitude is to towards me how they are when they behave around everyone else those are parameters that i look for in a real friend also of course there is that notion of friending and unfriending that breaks bonds so fast and makes them just as fast on social media one simple gesture one tap one friend turn to unfriend one button one request and one notification and just like that the bond is broken so in conclusion i would like to say that my real friends are people i would go to for advice my real friends are those people whom i post about on facebook not people who like posts on facebook my real friends are those people who are the source of my good memories and those are the people when i when post my ups on social media are there first so in conclusion i am truly and strongly against the motion that friends on facebook have become more real than our real friends thank you thank you <laughs> the rebuttal round questions yes team dilan uh, i am for the motion i would like to ask you uh, you mentioned that when you're online you cannot really tell whether somebody is befriending you for their own purposes or if they actually want to talk to you how will you be able to tell this offline especially when you're with them and this gives you the illusion that they are your real friends 
Thank you for asking that. Now, if I am online and the same thing happens with me and in the same situation offline, like I said, I would judge a person by their attitude towards me more than what they say, which I really can't check online, can I? I can't tell what their attitude is towards me, what their demeanor is towards me. I can't do that. Now, I would judge them based on more than just what they say, right? Yes, Tim Hardy. I believe you said something about real friends don't judge. Well, statistically, bullying in schools and uh, colleges are most often mean from so-called friends, offline friends. Uh, what do you have to say about that? You well, are speaking for the motion? Yes, I'm speaking for the motion. If a person is bullying you, let me clear this up, they are not your friend. There is a line between someone making friendly jokes with you and someone downright harassing you. So if they are your friends or not, they don't deserve to be. And if that is a friendship, that, uh, that is definitely never has been a real friendship. Team Tennyson. I am speaking for the motion. And my question to you is, on social media, it is sometimes easier to make friends than it is in real life because social media pages are curated to show you people of similar interests such as yourself and it is definitely easier for introverts to catch a connection with the other person behind the screen. So how do you explain that? So I would like to bring to everyone's mind the pandemic. I have myself seen in my life and a lot of studies have also shown that people who were extroverted became more introverted, they got more nervous speaking to a camera than a live audience. So I would really least say that in one way also talking on social media it really alienates you from people around you it makes you lose the common touch that you need to talk with people around you so in, it would not so if you make a real friend on social media you might just lose one that you have in real life if all you're looking for is similar interests and someone who listens to you when you went out now we have the last question from team shelley most schools also offer programs like Global Scholars where you essentially make online friends and you have to make it to form international relations and discuss matters. So more, some online conversations can definitely be fruitful. So don't you think online friendships also matter to become more aware about things? I never mentioned that online friendships don't matter. I just strongly believe that Facebook friends have not become more real than our real friendships. Our real friendships definitely matter a lot more than those we make on Global Scholars. And I was a part of Global Scholars. I can safely tell you I am not even in contact with one person who was on Global Scholars. Thank you, Lakshita. Thank you. I now invite the first speaker from Team Tego. Communication is about connecting with people in a more efficient manner. Good morning, my respected judges, teachers, and my worthy opponents. I am Risha Jain, and I am for the topic. Every coin has two sides, and it all depends on your perspective. Facebook was launched by Mark Zuckerberg on February 4th, 2004. Facebook was launched so that people could connect with each other and be more liberal with their ideas. Honestly tell me, when all of us go to outside uh, to other competitions and you all make friends, how do you all connect with each other? Through Facebook or through Instagram or any other social media, right? You won't be meeting every day that person whether you are good friends with them or not. Facebook has made a better place for us to connect. We can liberally share our ideas with other people around and we are not fearing them to judge us because they do not know us more plus they will give us the ideas that are based on real life experiences because we will always convey to those people who have gone through the same thing as we have gone through. How can we say that real friends are always the best and they can be real all the time? Does the word real give you the definition of being present with you or to be trustworthy with you? Real does not mean that the person is always going to be truthful to you in life. Many a times and according to researches, real friendship, whenever that breaks, 
a person is more depressed than a friendship that is broken online on facebook or other social media making online friends can be hazardous as many of my opponents would think but you have many other ways to cure that as well you have arpan that teaches us how to avoid all such cyber cyberbullying conditions we have police who can help us with this so why to worry instead if you attract danger what you will receive is danger and if you attract every person with a positive mindset what you will get back is a positive response from that person as doctors are not allowed to treat their own blood similarly it is not always the case that our people whom we know so called our real friends are always going to give us the right advice in life we can get the right advices from those whom we meet online according to all these things what i said i firmly believe that online friends are better than having friends who appear to be real in our life thank you thank you we have a question from team dillon you stated that if you lose a friendship in real life you are more depressed so doesn't that mean you're closer friends and more real friends with those people rather than the people who you've met on facebook you are against the motion yes i'm against the motion it is just that you meet that person daily and as said that we consider them to be our close friends though they are not real they are just present with us that's why it emotionally hurts us more than the online friends team hardy you stated in your nuance that um we we can decide how much information we we choose to disclose to the other person on facebook however people can be doing that with us as well so how do you decide without having all the information of what kind of person they are what kind of demeanor they have that they can or cannot be your friend you have the bio section over there where people write about what they are and what they do they could be anyone like the influencers or the friends that you meet in competitions or whatsoever so you know them that they are somewhat related to what you want to talk to them i once again remind to mention whether you are speaking for the motion or against the motion team keeps please i'm speaking against the motion and you used the word liberal and you talked about liberally sharing your thoughts openly more to friends on social media but uh, even on public uh, in public accounts even your closest friends if you say one thing doesn't it become the biggest ruckus on social media should you say even one comment or share your opinion on a topic that they don't like or an opinion they don't agree with don't your stories get banned but this is about personally talking to them on text it is not about commenting on a post yes team whitman you said that offline friends may not always offer the right advices do we have only one offline friend can there be not be many people that we go to for advice and also are you stating that online friends will always give us the right advice i'm not saying that they will they will always give us the right advice but they they don't know us more so it's not a very good emotional contact they are that we are building so even if they give us some information that we do not like it won't mind us much you are against the motion okay the last question yeah i'm against the motion so you mentioned that having a positive mindset would attract positive actions towards you but do you really think having a positive mindset would protect you from crim criminals posing to be teenagers or racist and sexist comments on facebook yes because you won't take them so emotionally with you and you will not consider them to be much important because what you are focusing on is what you want and not what others are commenting about you or telling to you thank you thank you risha thank now you. i invite the second speaker from team tagore there is a german quote which says a monkey draped in silk 
is still a monkey. Good morning, respected judges, dear teachers, audience, fellow competitors, and dear moderator. My name is Pulkit Agarwal, and today I will be expressing my views against the topic Facebook friends are more real than real friends. Since the 15th century, the definition of a friend has been a person to whom you are emotionally attached, a person whom you regard on a personal level. Since the dawn of time, humans have been social creatures, creatures who yearn for the company of the ones they feel comfortable with. But here, my fellow competitors are insisting that we should make online friends whom we know nothing about. You don't buy a can of baked beans without seeing the expiry date, and here, you're making a friend without knowing anything about him, not even his real personality, leave his real face. We say, do not judge a book by its cover. But here, we are judging a person based, wait, you don't even know the real name of the person, you don't know what the real character of the person may be, you don't know the real face of the person. What are you judging him based on? The person may be a catfisher. We do not know. Hence, online friends are dangerous and they may be catfishers who replicate their personality as a friend of you and may personally harass you. In 2017, um, Andaman Waters, a person from New York, was kidnapped by his online friend, Victor Hawkins. After a week, he was found by NYPD who claimed that Victor Hawkins was a mentally unstable person who had escaped from a nearby mental health ward. In 2017, Jeff Bezos in an interview with Jeff Bezos in an interview with the BBC along with Mark Zuckerberg, in which they both agreed on the point that Facebook was developed for people to connect with their loved ones around the world and for news to circulate freely around the world and not make unknown online friends, which is dangerous. In today's world, we should care about each other and we can only do it when we meet offline. We should interact with each other, which is very difficult online. Like one of my fellow competitors said, we are in the 10th standard. And if your mom sees you using your phone, you know what the consequences are. Hence, you go to play it down sometimes and that time you interact with the offline friends. And that's how you make a good friendship with your real friends. A monkey who is smarter than a human will never replace a human. Just like this, a real friend can never be replaced with a real Facebook friend. The samurais used to say, beware of a calm enemy and beware of an unknown friend. They both can inflict the same amount of pain on you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Team Hardy. Can you please mention whether you are Sorry, speaking? I'm for the motion. You said something about uh, online friends being dangerous, but isn't it a dangerous generalization to say all online friends are dangerous? And moreover, aren't real friends also capable of being dangerous and committing crimes? Okay, so let's talk it out on a personal level. Okay, sorry. So, if you know, I agree that it's not all online friends which are dangerous, but according to statistics, 23% of people who are on um, apps such as Instagram and other apps which help you communicate with unknown people are catfishers. Catfishers are people who replicate their identity and will do harass you and will do other bad things. And in Facebook, it is staggering 36%. So if we leave the other 64% aside, why don't you care about the 36% who are being harassed who or who may be harassed by those online friends? Yes, Team Keats. In your speech, you stated that uh, an online friend cannot be a real friend because you may not even know their name or you may not even know their real personality. But by the very definition that you said, a friend is one who you are emotionally attached to. Can't you become emotionally attached to someone and be a shoulder when they are in need without actually having to know their name? Okay. So, like I said, Victor Hawkins, the mentally unstable guy, 
he may replicate himself to be a good person, but would you personally like to be a friend of Victor Hawkins if you knew that he was a mentally unstable person? Yes, team Shirley. You mentioned that those who you meet online could be catfishers or those other types of criminals. But Jacqueline Fernandez shared a hotel room. She received gifts from a con man and she met him offline. So doesn't this prove that even if you meet someone offline, you truly don't know everything about them? Okay, so online friendship is not a one size fits all, okay? Jacqueline Fernandez may be one of the people who, who was saved, but what if any harm was done to her in this? You don't know. Now, she has a good story, and which we are happy about. But what if she was one of the 36 percentage of people who are annually harassed by online catfishers? Any other question? I am for the motion. Uh, you mentioned in your speech that the objective of Facebook was for connecting with our loved ones abroad. Well, in the same way, school is made for education, not for making friends, yet most of our friends are from school. By saying that Facebook's objective was initially something else, you do not rule out the possibility that some of our closest friends can and in the future will be from Facebook. Okay, so this means that you're making friends offline, but you're communicating with them online. So you're not making them online friends, you're using online communication to communicate with them and maintain your friendship. So this is offline friendship, but you are just maintaining it through online methods. You're not making an unknown person your friend, which is online friendship. So these are two different things. Thank you. Team Whitman, that would be the last question. Uh, as I recall, you stated that it is difficult for people to judge online friends. However, can't people offline also manipulate their behavior to try to flatter you? Okay, but in offline, when you meet a person face to face, gradually, but way faster than in online friendship, you'll get to know that the person has something fishy and you will break friendship with him. So it's a way more safer method because you will even have other people around you will be able to protect you if there is any harassment. Thank you, Polkit. Thank that was Team Tagore. I now invite the team members of Team Whitman to share their views. Good morning, respected judges, teachers, and my fellow participants. I am Soha Shah, and I am against the topic that Facebook friends are more real than real friends. Let us take the example of Antonio who was willing to sacrifice a portion of his thigh for his friend Bassanio, or of Mark Antony, who supported Julius Caesar even after his death, or in our own Indian mythology about Arjun and Krishna, about Arjun and Lord Krishna, who always supported each other and motivated each other on the right path. Every important figure has had someone to rely on. What is friendship? Friendship is, friendship is trust. It is faith that someone always has our back. And it is the belief that someone is with you through your highs and lows. Technology, with the advent of technology, Facebook has become an important tool of communication. But to say that a like or a comment on a Facebook post is more important than the feeling of a hug is a ridiculous concept. People convey and have been conveying their feelings through expressions and physical touch since the start of time. So how can we now convey our true sadnesses and joys through a screen Facebook friends are with you in your happy times. But what about when you are stressed or when you are anxious? Can the feeling of sitting in the same room, holding someone as they are crying, really be replaced by a text message? Friends are people who have seen you through your good and your bad times and have seen you transform into the person that you are. Real friendships cannot be ended with a click of a button. Real friendships are a constant. Real friends see us for who we really are and still choose to stay by our side. Facebook friends see our entire life through a filter that is meant to glorify us instead of seeing us as the real, messy, complicated people that we are. And then there's the issue of safety and privacy. How do you know that the person who you are talking to on Facebook is really the person who you think that they are? Especially as kids of a younger age, safety is an important issue that Facebook brings with it. With the advent of technology, Facebook has become an important tool of communication. But to say that just because a new means of communication is available, we change who we are communicating with is a ridiculous concept. Humans and human behavior is forever evolving.
but at the core we are still the same people who we have always been who huddle in groups to survive since the start of time so to conclude i would like to quote dorfe as he says friendships which are born in misfortune are more firm and last longer than those which are born in happiness thank you thank you we we'll start with the questions our team tennyson i will will be speaking for the topic my question to you is in real life as well there are friends who almost leave your hand when you're going through a bad patch there are friends who will manipulate their personalities and show that they do care for you but leave you when you're in a certain bad situation while meanwhile online friends tend to support you during those times so how do you explain that we cannot talk about friendships on a wide scale there will always be people who misuse you or manipulate you but it's on our discrepancy to choose who we become friends with team hardy i am speaking for the motion and my question is uh, you said something about humans how will keep on evolving and the way we communicate will keep on evolving so why can't we treat online relationships as another evolution of communication but i also said at the end of the day we are the same people who huddle in groups in order to survive team frost in the beginning of your speech you mentioned the examples of lord krishna and julius caesar but you cannot bring up those examples because facebook didn't exist in that era also continuing the example of julius caesar he was stabbed in the back by his closest confidant uh, confident brutus how can you still say that the safety is worse in online situations just because they did not have a uh, facebook at that point of time does not reduce the importance of their offline friends who uh, were their trusted confidants and uh, continuing with the example of julius caesar as you said brutus stabbed julius caesar in the back but he was manipulated by another one of his friends and he at the end of the day what he did was for his fellow countrymen and not in hatred of caesar last question from team tagore okay. i'm for the motion and my question is that as you said that online friends cannot always respect your privacy then how can you say that your real friends will always respect it whatever you share with them they will always keep it private i said that the main issue of facebook is safety and privacy which means that people who you don't even know who you have not willingly shared information with can take information from your account and share it with countless other people thank you suha I now invite the second speaker from team Whitman. Good morning to all. My name is Arush Agrawal and today I'll be speaking for the motion that Facebook friends are more real than real friends. My argument is based on three main points. Number 1 interaction, number 2 psychology and third valid case studies of this particular scenario. Now first of all what is interaction? Interaction alone is a very important life science. It is how two human beings or more can possibly communicate to each other to produce a meaningful conversation which results in emotional attachment forming. Now real now the thing about offline friends is when we go to school and we see people we can't exactly keep to ourselves there is some level of force on us to communicate with them whereas in online friends it's entirely of our choice we choose who we communicate with number 2 is psychology every time we do something enjoyable we secrete an element called dopamine and it is a very well established neurobiological fact that the brain will conduct whatever action it feels to derive itself the most amount of happiness which is dopamine once again and when we communicate with online friends we are essentially communicating with peers who we ourselves have chosen and therefore we secrete dopamine in our brains every time we converse with them and therefore we wish to do it every single time number 3 is a case study for example when we are sick or disabled or in any form of crisis offline friends they tend to leave us very quickly because mostly uh, when speaking in terms of traditional schooling they are mostly with us to either gain popularity or some form of advantage for themselves there are very few and rare cases of lasting friendships whereas with online friends there have been several cases where people who were rejected by society have been helped with their uh, help with their facebook and online friends through platforms like gofundme in order to establish charity in order to aid them in their situation 
another study that I would like to share with you is a study of Israeli fighter pilots. Although it may not have a direct relevance to this topic, it shows us that human beings respond to positive reinforcement more than we do to negative reinforcement. So for example, if we are rejected by society, uh, we, uh, we obtain negative reinforcement. Whereas if we are accepted by our online friends and they continue and they motivate us to go through life. It is based on these uh, three arguments that I rest my case and also a famous quote which says, a man has many friends, however very few of them tend to be with them in times of crisis. Thank you. Thank you, Arush. Are your team Shelley? So you mentioned, I am against the topic. So you mentioned that you communicate with online friends by choice who are your peers. But how are you so sure that the person that you're speaking across the screen is your peer and not someone pretending to be your peer? See, this is a constant matter of friendship that you can never be definitely sure about. Even with an offline friend, there is a certain case. For example, they can manipulate you, they can flatter you by their behavior. And you are, to some extent, as I mentioned, you are forced to talk to them every time you go to school. You can't exactly stay quiet all the time. Whereas with online friends, you get to choose who you are speaking to. You get to choose the medium of conversation at least. And there is still no determinable manner to judge an online or an offline friend. Yes, team Keats. I'm against the motion. Your teammates cited Shakespeare and taking that ahead. Bassanio said, it is but the ugly reason of mistrust which makes me fear the enjoying of my love. Don't you feel this kind of a mistrust in online friendships? See, if, if with respect to Shakespeare, Brutus was a loving friend of, she, of uh, Julius Caesar. However, he was manipulated by Cassius, who was one of the people who wanted to get rid of Caesar as the emperor to prevent dictatorship. It was in the best interest of the people after all. The, whereas with online friendships, you're talking to people who you choose on a software platform like Facebook. So there is not really any connection between the topics at all because one is a source of manipulation and the other is a form of speaking to somebody and you are not exactly going to be threatened by them in any manner on, on a digital platform. Thank you. Any other question? Yes, Team Tennyson. I am against the motion. You said that friendships online will um, last longer, but how can you say that friendships offline will not? Uh, for the record, I did not clearly state that friendships online stay, uh, uh, last longer. But I, still answering your question, the thing about online friendships is that it is a very pure form of friendship that can be formed. Because the thing is, you are talking to people who may be internationally placed and you cannot necessarily communicate them from your location. And by talking to people who share similar opinions with you on a digital platform, you can essentially create a conducive environment for your own personal development. So online friendships tend to last longer, generally speaking, than traditional friendships because they offer us a more lucrative environment for development, grow, for development and growth, unlike uh, traditional and real friendships in the offline world, which tend to mostly decay after schooling and uh, traditional education is over. Thank you, Arush. That was the second speaker from Team Whitman, because from Team Tennyson. Good morning, everyone. I am Ishwari Sogle, and today I will be speaking for the motion. Facebook friendships have become more real than real friendships. Francis Ward Weller has aptly stated, a friend can tell you the things you do not want to hear yourself. But in today's world, well, the first thing we tend to do when we wake up is check our phones. This adage is perhaps losing its meaning. You are, in a way, forced to like your friend's Facebook post, whether you like it or not. It is in human nature to confirm with the societal standards, as every person in the society wishes to be liked by each other and gain acceptance. This translates into us liking our friends' posts, even whether we wish to or not. We are quick to follow the trends that we see our friends doing. Face-to-face -face conversations follow a certain pattern. Hey, did you see that reel I sent you? Hey, did you see that trend? Do you like my take on it? In fact, friend groups meet up only to recreate certain trends they see other friends doing and go their own ways, hardly interacting after that. Out of sight 
out of mind is a timeless proverb. It is easier to interact with your friends on Facebook rather than spend 30 minutes getting ready to go see your friends in real life. The pandemic has proven the truth of the situation. It was easier to keep our Facebook friends in sight and to know what was going on in their lives. It was easier to post about that Dalgona coffee you made rather than see what was going on in your real friend's life because you could not meet up with them. It is also easier for people who are introverts. One of the major reasons today's population tends to gravitate towards platforms like Facebook and Snapchat is because they are introverts. It is more comfortable for them to chat with their online friends through Facebook rather than feel their heartbeat quicken upon facing the thought of social interaction. It is also certainly far more easier to unfollow, block, or unfriend a person rather than get, getting involved with ugly arguments and awkward fights. Also, maintaining relations with your international friends has become far more easier due to platforms like Facebook and social media. Here's the thing, when we go to a picnic or party, or be it an instance as simple as a colorful rainbow occurring in the sky, there is a reflex embedded in our mind. We say, quick, take a picture. But why? Because I want to post it on my social media account. We show, we are far more invested in getting the perfect picture or shot or video recording for our Facebook friends than enjoying the moment with our real friends. Here, I come back to the quote I stated at the beginning of my speech. Our human nature is to hide away or shy from our flaws and faults. Our real friends are quick to point them out because they care for our real well-being. But on Facebook, all we can say is, see is, oh my God, slay queen. Oh my God, so pretty. It is easier to hide away from those flaws on Facebook than it is from real life. Hence, with this, I rest my case. Facebook friends have become more real than real friends. Thank you. Thank you. The rebuttal questions now. The first question from Team Dylan. I am against the motion. You stated that you have the friends who you follow, uh, the, the offline friends which you follow online on Facebook, you're forced to like their posts. But doesn't that also happen with the online friends you make? And don't you also have to like their posts? And isn't also, isn't, aren't you showing truth? Is, is it, aren't you just lying up straight up to them? So are they actually your real friends? Well, in a way, that is true. But like I said, it is easier to hide away from something that is wrong in your post because your friends will naturally like it. That's why it is easier for you, you to maintain that friendship with your Facebook friend than it is to maintain friendships with your real friend. Your team, Whitman. You said that your real friends critique you because they care for your well-being. So how can escaping this critique on social media just by not presenting your flaws make your online friends better than your real friends? See, like I said, it is in our human nature to ignore all those flaws. You know, we don't want to face what is the truth, which is why I said Facebook friends have become more real than real friends. It might be so that the real friend cares more about you than the online friend does. But the truth that we face today is the fact that we give more importance to those Facebook friends who don't necessarily point out to our flaws because we don't want to listen to them. Thank you. Team Frost. I am against the motion. And in your first answer, you stated that it is easier to maintain online relations. How can you say that online and easier is better? Relationships require mutual effort, and easier does not equal better. So what are your thoughts on that? Yes, you do require that um, commitment to your friendship, but most people today are not ready to do that. You see, it is most people think that gaining friends on Facebook is better than doing it in real life, because, as I said, it is easier to do so. So not it's not necessary that easy means better, but in today's world, more people are driving towards that. Thank you. Thank you. We have the second speaker from Team Tennyson. People today know the price of everything and the value of nothing. This statement is credited to Oscar Wilde, who said it in 1890, but holds relevance even today. 
with the burgeoning importance of money and its impact on our lifestyle, it has never failed to endorse this statement. This statement has also led many of us to believe that Facebook friends have become more real than real friends. Good morning, one and all. I am Aishwarya Ayer, and I will be talking against the motion, Facebook friends have become more real than real friends. My speech will be structured into four parts. Firstly, I will be talking about what is friendship. Secondly, I will be talking about and I will be emphasizing the importance of having a real friend physically and not across the internet. Then, I will be stating why I feel that more people think that Facebook friends have become more real than real friends. And lastly, I will conclude by stating how wrong they are. Firstly, what is friendship? Contrary to popular belief that it is a union between two or more people who share common interests and ideas, I believe it goes much beyond that. A friendship is one in which an emotional bond is developed. You feel inspired when you look at each other's actions. You wait eagerly to crack jokes and laugh with your friends. In online friendships, this is just very risky and you have to trust the person beyond the screen. Secondly, I would like to talk about the quote which has been said by Bernard Miltzer. A true friend is one who knows that you are a good egg, even though he knows that you are slightly cracked. Now, why do I feel that real friends being physically by your side is more important? After a bad day or when you want to talk, to about, your, talk about something which you can't with your family, a friend is most important. No doubt, you can share your concerns on social media. However, a comment saying you've got this will never be more impactful than a real friend saying that to you while giving you a warm, tight hug. Now, why do people these days believe that Facebook friends have become more real than real friends? Introverts, for example, may think that Facebook friends are more approachable than friends in your vicinity. However, we all know and we have to admit that with increasing globalization and increasing use of social media, we often see posts captioned as expectations versus reality. Isn't this contradicting what friendship actually is? Shouldn't a friend know every tendency and action at the back of their hand? Shouldn't a friend know exactly what you will say on your good or bad days at the tip of their tongue? If you don't share everything online, how will a person on Facebook be able to comfort you? How will this help at all? Thus, I would like to conclude by saying, Facebook friends will never amount to real friends. Again, people may fall out, friendships may end, but that, my friends, is the beauty of life. Thank you. Thank you. We have a question from Team Dylan. Uh, I am for the motion. You mentioned that uh, when uh, chatting or connecting with uh, your friends online, you have to share everything about yourself for them to know you. But th doesn't this concept also apply to offline friendships? It's not like you, they can see you and already know everything about you. Won't you have to share? Thank you for your question. Again, not necessarily. I never mentioned that with online friends you have to share everything. However, a true friendship is one in which they at least know a little bit about you, isn't it? With offline friends you can judge them, their behavior towards you, and you can decide whether you want to share the personal information or not. With online friends, you have no idea. Uh, next question from Team Keats. Thank you for your speech. Uh, going directly by your speech, you gave a definition of friendship. So according to that, what about when you develop a bond with someone online, you're inspired by their actions online, and you want to crack jokes with them online? By your definition, is that not a real friendship? Thank you for your question. How long will this friendship last? What happens when you delete social media? Again, as you said in your speech, we are in standard 10. We are compelled to delete social media by our parents somewhere during the year, sometime during the year. How do you manage to maintain friendship with online friends in such a case? Team Shelley. According to your definition of a friend, it's someone you have trust, faith, and you are emotionally bonded with them. By that logic, arranged marriages are like online friends. How do you think arranged marriages have worked in India for so long if it's like online friends? 
<laughs> All right. In arranged marriages, firstly, you have to spend the rest of your life with your person if everything works out. And somewhere or the other, you have a bond or connection with that friend, right? Online friends. Do, will you ever meet your online friend in the future? And even if you do, if you get into an argument, for example, you can break your friendship. Well, arranged marriages aren't like that, are they? And also in arranged marriages, you learn to respect one another, even uh, in your differences. In online friendships, well, you can break the friendship if it doesn't work out. Thank you. Thank you, Ashwarya. That was Team Denison. Thank you so much. I now invite speakers from Team Frost. Good morning, esteemed judges, respected teachers, and fellow students. I would like to ask you all, how many of us have seen the maybe button on Facebook? Accept, decline, maybe. Social media is shattering the very foundation of our relationships. Our relationships built online, so-called relationships, are based on a shaky foundation without any commitment. A friendship which can be broken with a click of a button, a block, an unfollow. Is that a friendship to you? How many people in this room use social media? I would guess about 90% on a day-to-day -day basis, right? We scroll through curated and filtered feeds for countless hours. Hours which could be spent in fostering live, meaningful relationships. Social media is the devil disguised as an angel. Now, a lot of the participants mentioned that social media gives you a certain good feeling. That exact good feeling, biologically, is a release of dopamine in your brain. Dopamine is a neurochemical which is also known as the reward molecule. And dopamine is what is released in your mind when you have a piece of chocolate and you're on substance abuse, which is quite funny, actually. And it is what makes us addicted to social media. It is what makes us addicted to this white-coated falsehood. Multiple people have lost their lives to procrastination because of social media. And the pandemic is evidence of this. During the pandemic, the only contact we had with people was through social media. These so-called friendships that were fostered on social media, studies show that rates of depression, anxiety, and suicide almost went threefold. Are those friendships of any use? And people say that insecurities aren't judged. A friendship is not where the person doesn't know who you are. It's a, it's a time where the person accepts you for who you are, loves you in spite of your insecurities. Robert Frost once said, some say the world will end in fire, some say the world will end in ice. But as I see it, if we continue to spend our lives uselessly behind our screens, the world will end behind our screens while we stand by hopelessly and helplessly not being able to do anything because it has been too late. To conclude, I would like to ask you this. Today I stand before you, live, in person, face to face. Would I be able to make half the impact that I did, I hope I did today, on a screen? Would I? Thank you. Thank you. Judges, please note that the speaker is Nana Nandwani and speaking against. against the, motion. the rebuttal questions, yes, from Team Hardy. Uh, I think you said something about how it's easy to end an online friendship with just a block and an un a click yes. of a button. Isn't it also as easy to end an offline friendship? No, I because a true friend would tell you that no. You cannot do that. And you, out of empathy, out of basic humanity, which we are losing because of social media, we would use that and tell our friends that, no, this is not how our relationships end. It's supposed to end on mutual understanding and conversation. Team Dylan. I am for the motion. Uh, you stated that uh, we spent countless hours uh, scrolling through social media where these hours can be spent in fostering real-life relationships. 
but how is that possible when we do not when those countless hours we spend on our phone cannot be spent anywhere else we we have hectic schedules and the only relaxation time we get we spend on our phone so how will you explain this the only time you get you spend on your phone doing what maybe playing a video game maybe scrolling through instagram maybe going through facebook posts curated feeds it's just a falsehood that is presented to put up in higher image of yourself we are losing our roots because of this we are losing our grounded values the next question from team shelly no strings attached friends with benefits these are modern ideas of relationships where they use each other and forget about each other the moment things go south so in an offline relationship where you can be used in such a manner don't you think an online friend on facebook would be much more uh, easier to maintain relationships with again easier does not mean better a relationship requires effort and you stated all these terms that are prevalent in offline relationships right these terms have been propagated through online mediums all of them last question from team keech thank you for your speech i am for the motion so you stated that uh, social media is the devil in disguise and that social media has a lot of ill effects but what about people who Uh, spend their time on social media productively you could learn to solve a rubik's cube you could watch endless hundreds of thousands of videos about some topic that you're not understanding in school hell you could be messaging a friend to be asking them hey can you please help me with this i didn't really understand it so why do you present the argument that all time on social media is spent unproductively how many of us actually do that barely any of us do because there's a certain siren song of unproductivity and procrastination luring us into the dark deep abyss of social media thank you for your answer thank you we have the next speaker from team frost now good morning everyone my name is yuveer mulchanani and i am for the motion that facebook friends are more real than our real life friends what fools do in the end the wise man does in the beginning this is a timeless piece of spanish literature that was written 1544 and has survived every test of time since then fools today are quick to point out the flaws of social media but the wise still keep using them to question the authenticity of friendships on social media is as absurd as questioning a journey that was taken by an airplane just because our ancestors used boats the nature of a friendship the reality of a friendship is independent of the platform of which it was forged on the usage of social media such as facebook allows for global interconnection it allows for unity and it allows for propagation of ideas at a scale that we cannot even fathom in real life at the end of the day the people you are talking to on social media are real people talking to you advising you and at the end of the day that is what i define as a friend someone who you can look to in situations of peril and positivity for advice and for motivation and for basic emotional support the probability that the people you surround yourself with in real life are the best match for your synergy is extremely slim the real world has transcended into mayhems of social chaos toxicity and we jealousy malice and all these evils have crept into society they have disoriented society to such an extent that some of us in platforms that were meant to foster connection and unity see a place surrounded by fakes these traits are present in this new digital era but with the use of moderation and restriction are limited to a small group of people facebook friends play games together talk to each other daily know what's happening in each other's lives and have mature developed friendships how often have we done that with our real friends how often have we done this without the use of digital communication it is undeniable that the true bonds formed through facebook today stand stronger than those formed in real life humanity stands at a rare crossroads one path leading towards the future all our true friends within the reach of a screen or one leading back to the past only without the traditions values and culture are you questioning the authenticity of a platform that allowed for global communication and unity when we were all locked in our homes 
when George Floyd died, his online friends started the Black Lives Matter revolution. Do you want to doubt the platform that allows each one of us to connect, that allows each one of us to unite, that allows us to present our ideas at a global stage? All sacrificed for what? The same connections without half the benefits? Thank you. Thank you. We start the rebuttal round. We have Team Arnold asking the question. I'm against the motion. You stated that mo uh, online friends motivate you and that is what you consider to be friendship. Let me ask you this question. What motivates you more? Getting a text from your online friend saying that it's okay, you've got this, or your offline friend patting your shoulder and telling you it's okay, it happens. You fail to realize that this text on a screen, it may seem like a text on a screen to you, but to some people this really matters. This really affects the emotions and the mindset of a person. It doesn't matter how the words, are, it doesn't matter how you express it, even through a digital medium, you can still be equally affected by these words. Team Whitman. I am against the topic. You said that your online friends are real people in the end behind the screen. How do you know that they are real people? In this new digital era with so many bots coming up, with so many invasions of privacy by people who are catfishing, how do you know that they are real people? In real life, it is often said that a dog is a man's best friend. Even if it is a robot, it is still a friend. It is still someone who acts to you. It is still someone who comforts you and consoles you in times of emotional need. It does not matter whether the person behind is a robot or an actual person. It is still the emotions and their impact on your sentiment. Tim Tennyson. Thank you for your speech. How can you be so sure that people online will be there for you exactly when you need them? For example, due to differences in time zones, when you're desperate to talk to someone, how will you? How can you be sure that the same physical people will be there for you? The odds of all the people you talk to being there physically for you is much lesser than the entire globe at the convenience of your fingers. There has to be someone available for you, considering that the probability of that happening is much, much higher. We have the last question from Team Keith. I'm against the motion, and you mentioned that uh, behind the screen, real people giving real advice, and then you spoke about, you know, bots at least being a consoling friend, someone is there. Let me tell you, there was an article in Times of India, a bot created by Microsoft, was being put through testing, and uh, the person being, who was testing the bot, he, uh, the bot almost convinced him to divorce with his wife. So how is that real advice or even good advice of any kind? Can a real person not do the same? Can a real person not manipulate you for their best interests? Is that what you are implying? Because that is completely incorrect. If a bot can do it, then a real person can do it as well. Thank you, Yuvir. That was Team Frost. I now invite the speakers from Team Hardy. Good morning, everyone. My name is Anjum Patel, and I will be speaking for the motion, Facebook friends are more real than real friends. First of all, what are friends? What do we mean by real friends, Facebook friends? In my opinion, a friend is just someone you form emotionally bond with, someone you inherently trust. And that is what friendship is about. Doesn't matter where you made friends with them. And even if we want to put that aside, I'll say something a bit more personal here. I suffer from hearing impairment, and uh, I have to wear a device on my ears all day long, hearing aids. There is a label on me, that deaf person. When you're making new interactions in a physical world, everybody will just think of you as a person who has a disability, and they'll just feel sympathy for you. On an online platform like Facebook, Instagram, Discord, anything, you can choose to just be yourself. You don't have to be that identity. And Let's talk about the benefits. People with special education needs, like dyslexia, they tend to write letters upside down. They, people can't understand them in the physical world. But with technology, we have something like dyslexic keyboards with the symbols upside down so that dyslexic people can type and the other person can understand it in normal letters. 
we are bridging the gap between people who have disabilities and can't represent themselves. And I think that is what friendship is about. Someone we can trust, someone we can tell. And you know, Facebook, uh, real friendship, there's a human at the other end. And it matters how close your bond is with that human and not whether you made friends with them um, in a school or in a library or on your phone. Because you know something? When we're working in school, we're working. We don't get time to socialize. That's the whole point. We're studying. We're doing our job. We don't get this time to socialize. And you know, during the COVID-19 pandemic, we were all online. That's where I, at least, made a lot of friends online. And that is what it's all about. Thank you. Thank you. Team Shelley. Thank you for your speech. I'll, I was speaking against the topic. So you mentioned how uh, online interactions bridges the gap between disabilities and normal people. Well, uh, do you really, honest, although at the starting this would make sense, but do you really think if a person only likes you because they don't understand or don't know about your disability, it's a real friendship? I'm sorry, uh, can we just say that again? I wasn't so can you please repeat yeah. the question? So, do you really think if online your disability wasn't properly understood by the person you're talking to, is it a real friendship? Yes, I think they can we can definitely form close bonds. It do doesn't matter whether it's offline or online because we're still giving them the information, we're still understanding what they're trying to tell us. I think that's what matters at the end. Team Whitman. I am speaking against the motion. I am sorry for whatever experiences that you have had, but I think that real friends are people who accept you with your flaws. Not just because, it's not that you don't uh, tell people about your disabilities online so they become your real friends. Real friends are people who help you despite your flaws and with your flaws. Excellent point, that is a fruit. But the thing is, when we are making real friends, even then, I mean, I am telling you from personal experience, I don't know if that really counts as a real friend then, but all these so-called offline real friends, they'll always have that concept about me, that he's that he has that thing. And you know, I feel there is a block in creating those friendships. Online, you do not have to be identified as a person with a problem, but rather with the person that your skills are, what you are like as a person. Thank you. Thank you. Now I invite the second speaker from Team Hardy. A very good morning to one and all present here. My name is Samaira Rilkar, and today I will be speaking against the motion that is Facebook friends are more real than your real friends. First of all, I would like to say that a macroscopic majority of uh, the global population today, like even, even the people present here, we all use social media. May it be uh, being on Instagram or Facebook or even uh, Discord for that matter. I would like to say that Facebook in this topic is a metaphor for all online relationships that we as people have on social media platforms. Firstly, uh, during the COVID, uh, during COVID-19, the pandemic that we had, we can say that being online was the only way that we could communicate, talk to other people. But was it really worth missing out, giggling and laughing with your peers, talking to them in real life, seeing the, the expressions they made when you told them something ridiculous or a joke? I, I don't think so. And of course, we were on Google Meets at the time, but at the same time, the, the Google Meets that we had, it didn't have that much of an influence on us as people. Even right now when I'm speaking, it would be much more, um, it would have a greater impact on you when I'm speaking here and not on a virtual platform. Which brings me to my second point. From a psychological point of view, I would like to say that people who suffer from epilepsy, they, they cannot communicate on a phone, they, they, cannot they cannot communicate via uh, flashy lights or anything of the sort. This is something which uh, shows us that they're incapable of using a mobile phone. So secondly, uh, when, when, I talk about, uh, when I talk about this from a psychological point of view, I would like to say that our, uh, we, we have certain, we have certain uh, enzymes in our body, so dopamine, endorphin. These are 
uh, some chemicals which which are released when we talk to someone that we know that that we can that we know everything about with or without their flaws this is something which can only happen when you interact with a person in real life you feel happy the, the second you see that person it lightens up your mood it lightens up your face everything that has been going wrong the entire day just vanishes in a second now which brings me to my third point that is cyberbullying now facebook is an excellent platform when you want to talk to people when you want to communicate you can talk from one end of the world to someone on the other uh, on, on the other side of the globe but however when it comes to demotivating gullible people facebook can also have certain inherent laws as uh, the as one of the oxford union debaters mr jack uh, mr jack simmons once said uh, social media is corrupting human interaction today in conclusion i would like to say that we as human beings need to be able to interact with uh, need to be able to interact in real life rather than on a virtual platform where we don't know who we're talking to exactly like sure they must be uh, telling us certain information but they can be hiding certain things as well thank you thank you we have the first rebuttal question from team tennison <clears throat> i spoke for the motion my question to you is you talked about bullying in your speech but there are friends in real life who also turn to like turn into your bullies you know friends can also be demotivating because of the words they speak to you that is no different from the friends you make online so how do you explain that uh thank you for your question uh i would like to say that well bullying and a friendly comment past are two different things there are certain people in real life as well who completely harass you instead of just being your friends being there to support you and if your friend who was earlier a good person later on turn uh, turn into someone who is demotivating you who is who is causing you uh, certain insecurities that you feel about yourself that is not a friend in real life or or, or on a social platform team whitman you clearly stated that dopamine is only secreted when you interact in real life so i want to ask you to i want to ask you this why is it not possible for people to secrete dopamine and have a, a meaningful emotional bonds with people over computerized platforms so uh i think that the curated feed that we have uh when we when we open instagram or facebook or any other social media app for example we uh the the receptors that we have the dopamine receptors they are kind of fried at a certain point because of the amount of scrolling that you're doing so after a point uh even if you are talking to someone that you love online it's not the same experience that you have in real life it's not the same as sitting down and talking to them over a cup of tea team man i'm for the motion you mentioned about cyber bullying i would like to ask you uh, we all know that cyber bullying is more of a situation in which you can handle it in a better way like you can just ghost the thing ghost the statement or anything but in real life you cannot necessarily forget anything if someone tells you in real life and uh, so you get my question yeah so if someone tells you something in real life uh one cannot always ignore it and as you said you can go someone but even on a uh, even on a uh, on an online platform there are certain people who take things too hard the first time the, so let's say someone commented on your post and they said something awful about you like oh you have you're too short or you have a big forehead or something of the sort in in such cases the person who is receiving these comments they they might take it to heart so it's not always that only in real life can people bully you we have the next question from team frost i am for the motion you mentioned that when the text is hurtful it has impact it has deep impact on the person and affects them psychologically then how can you say that it is in the same in a positive scenario if the text on a screen affects a person negatively then theoretically it does have the power to affect them positively it does have the power to spark their dopamine yes but at the same time you must admit that 
it has a greater impact when you are speaking to the person in real life. I'm talking in terms of a, a positive statement which is made. When someone says something to you in real life, which is which is positive, which you can uh, which you can take in a in a better way, that is something which which has a deeper meaning to you. Thank you. Uh, now we have Team Arnold coming on the floor. Speakers from Team Arnold. Before I begin, I'll quickly borrow a few seconds and ask everyone that what actually is a real friend to you? To me, it's someone I can trust without the fear of my data being hacked. Someone who will grab me a water of, uh, bottle of water when I am dizzy and not share a sticker of water bottle. Hello, good afternoon everyone. This is Vaidehi Borkar and you will eventually realize that I'm against the given motion. We all have ups and downs and with that comes our friends which laugh at our flaws and also help us improve. Whereas Facebook or online friendship was more like a materialistic friendship where all we have been shown is the how perfect the person actually is. Where friendship also means to know the flaws of the person standing in front of you. Let me ask you this question once again. That what is a friend to you? A friend is not necessarily someone who, you know, texts you and tells you, okay, you can do this, it's gonna be fine. There's someone who gives you a hug, tell you that it's okay. When you're crying, will you be sitting in front of your laptop or waiting for your online friend to come and, uh, you know, to interact with you? I can't do that. I can't sit in front of my laptop waiting for the friend to come online and tell me it's okay. I'd rather you know, go call my friend or go to a friend and ask him for a hug. You know, when I am just so overwhelmed with my emotions and want to break from the entire environment and the stressful 10th grade, and I would just want to, for me, I will go play some sport. I wouldn't text a social media friend and tell him that, you know, just let's have a match. I'd rather go call all my neighborhood friends and tell them, let's have a match. Let me remind you one thing. Today, all those introverts that we have around ourselves have also been them themselves and been an introvert because of the so-called social media platforms. Because you've been harassed and you've been given those negative comments on every single word of yours. Every single word of yours. Psychology has proven that it is easier to connect to people face to face and not text to text, where all you can do is read the messages and not the emotions and the expressions. Thank you. Thank you. We have a question from Team Shelly. You mentioned introverts are formed due to the uh, introverts are formed due to the things they see on social media. But uh, you also mentioned that you as a person can't accept having an online friend and that you need a break from the environment. Don't, uh, don't you think we can look at it from a way that introverts need a break from the environment they're in and all their insecurities and they can turn and look at an online friend to cope up with what's happening? Uh, firstly, what I meant was that most of the introverts today tend to be introverts because of the social media platforms and not being able to build the confidence. Secondly, by a break, I meant the so-called tight shed schedule of a 10th grader. I hope that clarifies your A quick question, question from team Dylan. Uh, I am for the motion. Uh, you stated in your speech that uh, if you're going through some crisis at home, for example, crying, as you said, you know, you don't like to wait in front of a laptop screen for your online friend. But isn't that, isn't that the quickest solution you have? 
it's not exactly quick to call up your friend and hug them if, because they don't live nearby. An online friend is mostly going to be the quickest solution you have or someone to comfort you. That depends on your socializing skills. I possibly can't cry and wait in front of my laptop for my friend to come online. He might take hours to come online and I can't continue crying for hours. I have other important stuff to do. Whereas I can just take a few minutes, go to my neighbor and say, Hi Siddhi, I'm not feeling well, can you please give me a hug? And her uh, conversing with me and knowing what my problems are are way better and way more motivating than telling, texting your friend that this is my problem and this is what is bothering me. Last question from Team Tennyson. I spoke for the motion. Uh, as you said, uh, we are in, currently in 10th grade and we need our leisure time. But the thing is, if you call up your real friends and tell them, come on, let's play a match, most probably they will say, oh, I'm sorry, I can't, I have physics class. But on the other hand, with your online friends, as one of us said, you can just say, come on, let's have a quick game of Call of Duty and they'll be there for you. So how do you justify that? Sitting in front of the screen for 48 hours, as someone mentioned, you know how terrible impact it has on the biological uh, body of yours, how negative impact has the screen timing and everything. Uh, will co playing Call of Duty or Free Fire and all that will actually make you exercise or, you know, go get, you know, go on the field, fall and get hurt and bleed, something like that. You wouldn't have that one friend of you after falling, get a band-aid for you and laughing at you saying, it's okay, don't be a crybaby and give you the band-aid. That doesn't happen on Call of Duty. Thank you. That was the last question. Thank you. Uh, now, we have the next speaker from Team Taylor. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dev, and today I'm here speaking for the motion that Facebook friends are more real than real friends. Let me ask you. Let, let me ask you all. What was the main aim of invention of social media? To bring people together from different parts of the world. We have seen that Facebook and Instagram brings people from different parts of the globe without any cost, and it helps you talk to people effortlessly, costlessly, and seamlessly. We are all connected with strings of text across the world. That is why WWW stands for World Wide Web. As for friends, Facebook friends are made, mostly people have made Facebook friends throughout the lockdown as of me personally. So during the times when you can't really talk to physical, physically to people, you have to rely on online sources. And as someone mentioned, if you go seeking help, even online, it will carry the same weightage as you go to someone physically and ask for help. And maybe they'll give you a shoulder to cry on. But still, in that scenario, help is help, no matter what source it comes from. It is also said that cyber, many of my opponents actually mentioned cyberbullying. Actually, it has to be noted that even the cases of cyberbullying and uh, many rude comments passed online, it is also in our hands how free we are to people and how much we are willing to share information with them. The more information you share to people whom you don't necessarily know, you are more susceptible to being cyberbullied and all. Lastly, I would like to say that friendship is friendship. It doesn't matter from which source it, you receive it from. That is why even if a Facebook friend is there with you for even for five minutes of your day, but a friend whom you meet physically is not present at that moment when you need that friendship, a Facebook friend will be more real to you than a real friend. Thank you. Thank you. We have Team Tegor asking the rebuttal question. Um, I'm against the motion. Um, I'm quoting a line from your speech. You said that if you go for help online, you will get the same amount of help offline, right? So if, for example, you hurt yourself late in the night, mm -hmm. how will the online friend help you in any way possible? It will be the offline friend who comes and helps you. I mentioned scenarios. 
if you are in a scenario when there is no physical friend around you, at least an online friend will tell you that it's okay. If you can't contact your physical friend in some means, then some help is better, right? Okay, thank you. Team Shelley. I am against the motion. So you mentioned how mostly everyone, specifically you, has made Facebook friends during uh, the lockdown or whatsoever. But what do you speak about the people below the poverty line who have no chances whatsoever of making any kind of online friends? It is also to be noted that people below the poverty line, how, how frequent is it that we physically go and visit the people living below the poverty line? A uh, cross question, no cross questioning allowed. We have a question from Team Frost. I am against the motion and in your speech you said that you have to rely on online friendships when offline aren't available. And in all the scenarios that you explain, you explain it as though there are no offline friendships. So you yourself imply that offline friendships are the first choice, that they are the most purest connection that a person can have. I also mentioned the case of scenarios, like for example someone said that uh, if you are hurt and all, but if you cannot contact any of your physical friends at that time, so maybe talking to someone at least about your situation is better, right? The last question, Team Whitman. I am against the topic. You said that you can protect yourself from cyberbullying by choosing not to share information. But isn't that contrary to the whole point of having online friends, which is sharing information with people that you don't know? Uh, Cyberbullying is not from friends, as many of you have uh, uh, highlighted that point. A friend will not bully you, right? So first, it is your first step is to make sure you know someone online. Then you should share your information. Thank you. That was the second speaker from Team Arnold. Now I invite the speakers from the last team, Team Dylan. Namaste to one and all present here. I, Pradyumna Singhi, stand in favor of the proposition that Facebook friends are, real, are more real than your real friends. I'll take an example of my friend Vikram. Many people ha struggle with face-to-face -face conversations. It gets them very, very worried. They cannot be themselves, they cannot communicate their feelings effectively when they're in a face-to-face -face conversation. Online, this is not a problem. You simply have to type whatever you want to say through a keyboard and it is very easy to communicate this way. How else would I be able to maintain relationships with such people? Um, relatives, many of our relatives live in abroad countries. It's not exactly convenient, we cannot meet. How do you connect with such relatives? Through technology, through these platforms such as Facebook and Instagram. These help you connect with people all around the world and find people, more like-minded people, who you can communicate with and who become your friends. As we move more and more into the modern era, almost everyone has a phone. I would assume that everybody sitting here in this room would have a phone. And as, uh, as stated earlier in many of the speeches, and many of the speeches, we come to school to spend our time studying. We hardly have some break time, which we have to spend eating. If you spend talking, we won't get time to eat, and that can have adverse effects on our health. Also, we spend hours on our, we spend hours on our phone each day. It's a source of relaxation, and it's very uh, comfortable for us to chat via our phones. It has been shown that uh, these countless hours of chatting that we do with our Facebook friends, this makes we converse more with them than we do with our school friends, and this makes them stronger and more real friends. I would also like to state that confiding in your online friends might seem a little bit of an easier experience for many. You're not face to face and it's not at all awkward. When you share these messages, you can delete them after they have been read and there will be no further record of these messages. Offline, once you say it, it's done. There is no way to make the person forget what you have just said. Many of us might have shared many secrets in third, fourth, in the lower grades. But eventually, all of them would have been out into the open and beyond our control. To end my speech, I would like to state a quote. A friend is, one, is not one who presents himself with you. It is one who is present to you. Thank you. Thank you.
Uh, we have a question from team Arnold. I'm against the motion. You stated that the secrets you've shared with your uh, friends in third or fourth grade were disclosed to everyone eventually. How sure are you that your online friend wouldn't disclose those secrets of yours after the message have, messages have been deleted? They've deleted by your side, not his or her. Uh, so I'd like to take an example of WhatsApp here. When you go to delete a message, there's two options. It's delete for yourself and delete for everyone. Such options are available on mostly all social media platforms. When you delete it for everyone, nobody can see that message and it has been sealed. So sharing of these messages is simply not possible. Team Frost. You said that some people struggle talking face to face. And do you not think that because online mediums provide these people without talking face to face for communication, that it is a fundamental skill for being able to talk face to face, right? I mean, we're in a debate. So, do you not think that offline friends push you to hone your skills and to be better instead of just avoiding your problems? Uh, yes, uh, of course, uh, offline friends do help you push through those boundaries, but for many it's not that easy. And of course, they're not sitting at home chatting all the time on their screens, right? Everybody does come to school, you do have to speak. So to a certain extent, your online friends do push you, but uh, it's not comfortable for many people to be out in the open and speak. And this is why uh, like social media provides them a good platform to talk to their friends and be comfortable. We have the last question from Team Keats. I am against the motion. <clears throat> Don't you think that all these social media, it's also a source of distraction and a waste of countless hours that could have been spent productive and like, especially since all of us are in 10th grade and also like you spoke about lunch break, instead of wasting these countless productive hours online, I'd much rather eat lunch with my friends and not alone. I'd still chat with them while I'm eating. I mean, that's the whole reason I sit with my friends and lunch. Uh, so, spending hours on social media is, can also be productive, like talking to your uh, friends, especially if you struggle with face-to-face -face conversations. And majorly, it's also a source of relaxation for us because of the hectic schedule of a student in today's day. Thank you. That was the last question. Now we have the last speaker for the day from Team Dillon. Namaste, everyone. I may, my name is Ribhu Mishra, and I will be talking against the motion. I connected with my friend Karamveer on Facebook because he popped up into my recommendations for a common interest in football. But in reality, I don't know anything about him. I just know that he's an avid football fan, the clubs he likes, and the clubs he does not like. But if you ask me about his personal life, his age, I don't know if he's a 70-year-old grandma with a Maradona display picture or a four-year-old child. I don't, if you ask me his, how to spell his name, I don't know how to spell his actual name. I just know his, his username. If you ask me his surname, I don't even know his surname. He never told me. The friends we meet in real life are the friends who last with us till the end of time. We learn with them, we grow with them, and the experiences we share make us better human beings. In this modern age, you don't know who's a catfish, or now, with the advent of ChatGPT, who's AI. The website AI or Human shows us the d difficulty there is in differentiating between humans and AI. There are news articles every day about catfishers who are kidnapping people. Uh, let me give you an example. Recently, a girl named Anna who was to meet up with a friend, Sam, full, uh, her full name was Samira, uh, met, connected with Samira on Facebook. When she met up with Samira, she found out Samira was actually a man who, who had already kidnapped seven other girls like her. But now, but thankfully, Samira was, uh, Samira was, Samira, or Sam, was captured, and the seven girls plus Anna were saved. The friends, you, the friends who you meet online, you don't know how their experiences are. You don't know, are they actually caring, or are they just putting up a false face just to confuse you? They, uh, they might be actually caring, but they might appear caring, but in reality, they might not be. <sighs> They might laugh at you they, behind your backs. You don't know how they are talking to you. They might laugh at you. They, they might share your stories with other people. And even if they are catfishers, they might actually be salesmen who, who steal your data and then put it up on the net. Staring at a screen cannot help us create that bond of friendship and connect with others. 
In school, we eagerly wait for our lunch break so we can talk to our friends if they are not in the same class. Talking to them fills our stomachs more than eating. We have experiences with real friends which teach us and leave, a, uh, which teach us and leave an, an impact on our lives. These exper experiences are usually happy, but if there's something wrong, but if you have done something wrong, then of course they are bad, but your friends are always there with you. An example of this is, one day, I almost crashed into an auto rickshaw. I sent, I sent a message to my real friends who I, ha who I connected to on a WhatsApp group that I'm almost dead. And then, ironically, my phone died, and I couldn't talk to them for 10 hours. When I charge my phone again, I have 50 voice calls and 80 messages just asking if I'm alive. And this thing, this experience, shook me till my heart. I decided to do this, try this experiment out with my, with my Facebook friends. I sent out a message that I'm almost dead on the 10 WhatsApp groups I had. But, lo and behold, 10 hours later, I've got one voice call and five messages from my parents asking if I'm actually, why is my phone off? Well, this proves that Facebook friends have never replaced our real friends. They are not replacing our real friends, and they never will. Thank you. Thank you. We have a question from Team Tennyson. I spoke for the motion. <clears throat> you see, in real life also, there are people who maintain this facade, or they wear a mask. Uh, and they are not really the people you feel them to be. So that happens in online as well as offline. How do you explain that? And, you know, even if that friend is an old grandma, you can still debate on whether Messi or Ronaldo is the goat. I mean, they are a friend in that way. So how do you explain that? So to answer your first question, when you're talking to a friend offline, you're talking to them face to face. You can see their facial expressions. You can also understand from their words and how they're speaking, how their attitude, attitude is towards you. And also, you hear rumors about them when you are talking to other group of friends. And then you might actually find out that they are not actually your friend who are just putting up a card. But then also, while then online, you are just talking to that person one on one, and you don't have any other friends who are also friends with him. So then, uh, so then that time, you do not figure out whether or not he's an actual friend or not. And can you repeat your second question? Even if that online person is a five is a five year old kid or a grandma, I mean you can still bond bond with them over the interests, right? You can still consider them as a friend in a way. Yes. So, uh, yeah, yes, that's right. You can talk to them. You can argue about who is better, Messi or Ronaldo, but you can't call them your real friends. And that's what our topic is today. And it might it might not just be an eight year old grandma or a four year old child. It might just be Samira, Sam, who wants to kidnap you. So yes, that's how we'll answer your question. The next question from Team Tagore. I'm for the topic. Apps have facilities like that directly help you to contact with the police if you are in danger by the press of a button. What are your views on that? I don't. So yes, and there are apps which have direct, uh, which have facilities which can help you directly contact the police. But I don't know how that is currently affecting our topic, which is Facebook friends have replaced our real friends and are more real than them. Can I? Hello. Team Shelley. I spoke for the topic. And uh, regarding your example with Anna and Sam, where you get kidnapped, in most cases where women have be, or children have been kidnapped, raped, or acid attack survivors, it is noticed that it is a person or a male usually, who usually is their family or a close friend. You knew everything about this person and they still attacked you in this manner. Don't you think an online friend is much more real when they can't attack you in such a way? But didn't Samira also kidnap Anna? Yes, there are people who are not your actual friends, and they are. Ext and if there are people who talk to you badly, who want to, uh, who want to kidnap you, who want to murder you, then I do not believe that they are actually right to be your family members, to be your friends. And I think you need to stop be having relationships with those kind of people. The last question from Team Frost. I am for the topic. First, I would like to add to Tennyson's point that if the name, the appearance, and the overall outward characteristics affect your friendship, then I am sorry, that is not a real friendship. Moving on to my question, meeting up with an online friend is in your hands. Your information is with you. It is an active choice to meet up with an online friend. 
And m uh, the example that you mentioned of almost dying in an auto rickshaw, is WhatsApp not social media? Isn't that how you conveyed your message? Are these friends in a way not, in a way, technically your Facebook friends? So the friends who I, who I meet, uh, so the friends who I send the, out the message to were the school friends who I first connected with online, offline, and then added them to my WhatsApp, and th that's how I started talking to them. But also, can you repeat your question? Uh, my question was, uh, in a way, these people are more of your social media or Facebook friends. Not because really. you contacted them through social media. I'm sorry. Not really, but if you contact them first offline, that's when you first form the bonds of relationship, the bonds of friendship, and then you come onto an online platform. I'll give an example of, uh, of my friendship during the coronavirus. I was friends with Pradyumna before the coronavirus, but at that, but when the coronavirus started, I didn't talk to him for a while. And then there was a longing which between him and me and all the other friends I had, because we couldn't talk face to face, so we started talking face to face. And I believe the friends who you first met on offline and then connected on social media are not social media friends. They are your real friends. Thank you, Ribu. That was team Dylan. And that was the last team for the debate today. We now come to the end of the day's debating. We just witnessed very rational, reasoned and compelling arguments and action. The debaters clearly elucidated their standpoints through utilizing rhetorical eloquence. The competitors were very quick in their thinking with persuasive speeches, clear thinking, great poise and confident demeanor. Well done everyone and may we have a big round of applause for all the participants. Social media like Facebook, Instagram today have become a virtual world where relationships are sustained through instant messaging and the posting of random photographs followed by a like button, etc. In a world where the concept of friendship has become digitalized, it is somewhat difficult to define this concept of friendship. I take the old world tradition, traditional norm perspective. Friendship according to me, should be deep and something you care enough about to work at, which means there should be real contact with the person with whom you celebrate your joys, your accomplishments, share in their grief and sorrow, offer support and assistance in times of need. But for many of you sitting in the audience here, I believe the Facebook friends have become more real because of the availability of online friends most of the time. For them, finding friends online is much easier than finding friends offline. These online friends are always there to keep company in the boring moments and share jokes and other interesting uh, things. But in my opinion, when these type of friendships are made, people only receive a fragment of a person on online version of someone that only reciprocates a conversation in a given moment. Social media friends have their place in some people's lives, but this kind of friendship doesn't provide people with the social, emotional, or physical learning and development they need. These were my thoughts on the topic today. Judges have allotted the points to the participants. We'll wait for the final results to be tabulated. In the meantime, I request our esteemed judges to share their views on the topic and the competition this day. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, I must say a, a, a wonderful uh, competition. Everybody uh, was uh, in here uh, since you are the cream of uh, your school, I think uh, it, it's a very good uh, um, representation that has happened here from nine schools uh, that we see here this morning. Um, when, when you um, speak, uh, you know, a lot of us in my generation would be relating to things in our life. We've seen life of maybe two, three decades more than you. So, uh, so our perspective of it could be a little different. But uh, like a couple of you said, 
it's corona, it's online. I would just say, be aware, you know, be aware of whom you are selecting. Uh, it's good when you have some pastime, do not compromise on your ICSE studies and look for your online friends. Look for people who are around you, who will be there. Uh, none of you mentioned this quote, which I was expecting, a friend in need is a friend indeed. That's one of those um, childhood quotes that we had heard about. And that actually says, you know, if your Facebook friend comes to you when you need him or her, he is your friend. And if that guy who is right next to you and takes a WhatsApp video of you in danger or in need is not your friend, even if he may be with you in person. So I'm not a participant and I don't have to speak for and against and that's why I'm telling you uh, uh, the both sides of the coin as we look at it. Somebody mentioned arranged marriages. The very word arranged means that there is a background check that is done and uh, in historical times an arranged marriage in Indian philosophy in the Hindu uh, belief is when two families come together for seven generations. It's not two people who meet for a couple of likes and follows and Instagram movies. I think somebody, the only mention was Discord was mentioned only once. I have two kids your age, so I know how much Discord and Snapchat is on, uh, more than Facebook is. That's what I told the judges and principal ma'am when I heard the topic. Uh, Facebook probably is not um, one of your generation uh, social medias. Uh, it's from our generation and probably who set up the topic is from uh, is a teacher from our generation and uh, you know discord and snapchat is how many times do you see that you know i'm not feeling well on a discord or a snapchat you always see wow i went i reached mumbai international airport and then i'm going to maldives today how many times did you see that okay my suitcase broke is there anybody there near the airport who can help me with a new one we will never see these messages on those social media. So that friend who will reach out to you when he or she is in need is your friend because he, will, he and she will reach out, to, reach out to you when you are in need and will look for you when he is in need. Okay? So uh, good luck, um, boys and girls. You did really well. We've uh, taken down. I mean, a couple of you were nervous. But, uh, I mean, it's okay, it's just part of life. I wasn't speaking the way I am uh, when I was your age. I was not one of the top uh, debaters, but experience, life, and situations take you where you have to be. I am sure you will all do well in life. All the best. Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, as uh, Madam said, everyone, or each of you, spoke very well. And uh, as I said, we are an offline generation. You are the online generation. But what I would like to tell you is, look before you leap. Take steps. Think. When you are there on the online platform, most of you students are there in the online platform, uh, affected and led by the online comments. and. Uh, as you said, a lot of hormones are secreted, dopamine and all that. So, but don't get carried away by that. Listen to your parents, listen to your teachers, they are there to guide you. Online is not better than the offline. Be with your friends, be with your real friends, that is what we are. That is what... Uh, motivates us and guides us and that is the real uh, you can say uh, they are telling you from their experience and that what you get on your online platform is not what is real so that you need to decide and then take the right step at the right time all of you spoke very well let the best person win so congratulations and best of luck to all of you thank you Good afternoon, everyone. It was an interesting morning. I say interesting because we got a little peek into what the Generation Z actually thinks. Okay? Now, now debate apart. How many of you genuinely believe that an online friend is a, a real friend as opposed to an offline friend? Honest, okay? No cheating. 
Sí. Sí, look at this. So it's quite obvious. You know what? Your principal ma'am and I have known each other for almost 20 years, Nilo. 20, 20, yeah, maybe 25 years. We don't meet very often. But when we do, because we met offline, okay? We do meet online when there is work to do or something. But because we've known each other offline, when we meet, the distance just vanishes and we're able to talk to each other. And genuinely speaking, children, I'm concerned. He spoke about Anne and Sam. Yeah, that is a reality. It is a reality. And you can't be, you can't hide from that. There are, there are those predators who are just waiting there to prey on young people. And again, there is no guarantee that what you put up there, I can say I'm the most beautiful, I was Miss India in 1972. People probably believe because you weren't born at that time. But the fact is, half the information there is fake. Talk. She spoke about arranged marriages. I must tell you, there was this arranged marriage through the internet, okay? And there's this man, suppose very handsome. But then, when it turned out, he was wearing a toupee. And he was actually bald. So it's so easy to fake joy, happiness, sorrow, everything online. When the reality, give me a warm hug any day. Okay, but all of you spoke fairly well. It could have been better. I say it could have been better because you are the creme de la creme of your school. And therefore, you should give your best. Let the better person win. All the very best. God bless you. While the scores are still being tabulated and collated, uh, I request, is there anyone in the audience who would like to come forward and share their views? Good afternoon, I am Arnav Lenka from 10th A and I am for the topic that uh, Facebook friends are almost like real friends. Um, it is true that while most of you said that the bonds formed by offline friends are more strong, but I, I, I highly disagree with this. You can form an online friend and they can be as close as an offline friend. Because yes, there is a the problem as someone said, 36% um, are harassed and 64% are no, or it's the other way around, but <laughs> but I still believe that an online friend can be very close to you. Yes, you cannot have, you cannot see their reactions or you cannot form the strong bonds with them, but there are very few cases in which that happens. And in most cases, online friends are, in fact, more stronger than offline friends. Thank you. Good afternoon, one and all present here. I am for the topic. And I strongly believe that offline, online friends are more real than offline friends. Today, when I come up to the stage, I, was, I shared this with my online friend before coming to school, that there was gonna be, uh, there was gonna be a debate held in our school, and I'm pretty excited to be an audience of it. They were pretty angry with me. They said, why didn't you participate? They were the one to push me to come and participate. Now, with this golden opportunity, I'm able to share this with all. I'm, as a personal experience, I do not like social interactions, and online has given me the one method to express myself. Even though I do not know the name of that player, I can tell them, Maybe their name is XYZ. Hey, XYZ, I am not feeling well. Can you please load up into the game? Let's play for two hours. That is some quality time which I spend. For a tree to reach heaven, its roots must first reach hell. To see everything in life, you must first go through everything wrong. That's where online comes into place. Online tells you about all the ups and downs, all about the bullying, but in a shorter way. Bullying can be stopped by blocking, by cyber police, and by your friends helping you out. That is why I strongly believe that online friends are more real than offline friends. I now request Principal Ma'am to please give us a few words of encouragement. We've had a beautiful morning. A very, very enriching uh, morning. Uh, where I uh, witnessed students from uh, all the ICSE schools of this city uh, wax eloquent 
What I observed was um, the confidence level, the ability to speak with clarity, the diction, pronunciation. On a topic like this, one cannot really expect too much of content, but somehow in that one hour, you were all able to manage to put three points across with absolute clarity and um, uh, analysis and your thought process uh, in place. That's what made me feel so confident that um, ICSE students are being groomed well. Many of you quoted Shakespeare. I felt happy too about that. It's only an ICSE student who will quote Shakespeare so beautifully and love Shakespeare for it. And um, on the whole, I enjoyed the morning and uh, very proud of the fact that uh, we have um, a team, um, each school sending its team that is um, speaking with uh, panache and uh, clarity and putting their points across. So. Um, a big thank you to all of you for being here. It, for many of you, it must have been, been a long drive in the morning. And um, thank you, judges, all of you. Um, Mrs. Praraj, Mrs. Varghese, Mrs. Krishnaswamy, all of you sharing your opinion and your thought process with our uh, children and with my school children. Um, the moderator, uh, thank you so much for um, ensuring that each speaker got uh, a minute or two to express their um, views on uh, the topic. My own children who came up and spoke, I uh, could imagine that um, today's child is very much wired up on the online platform as in the offline platform as well. So uh, viva the change. Change has come to stay, and we have to accept it. I had a smile on my face when one child so vociferously spoke about arranged marriages. I happened to meet my husband through the Times of India <laughs> advertisement, and we are still growing strong 40 years hence. So that's, that's the most beautiful part of, um, of uh, yes, of, of life per se, and the essence of life, which all of you have to you know, sort of live it and uh, enjoy the flavor of living it. God bless you. And uh, thank you once again, all of you, for being here this morning. We'll start with the runners-up team. The runners-up are the team comprising Hantra Zaveri and Lakshita Peswani. The winning team, Rishit. Risha Jain and Pulkita Garwal. The first runner-up speaker, Pulkita Garwal. And the best speaker of the morning, Hantra Zaveri. Firstly, 
we extend our sincere gratitude to the council for giving us the opportunity of hosting this event. Continuing, we thank respected principal ma'am for our continual support and guidance. Moving on, we express our heartfelt gratitude to our esteemed judges. Thank you, Chandra ma'am, for your significant contribution in regulating this debate in such a smooth manner. A noble appreciation to the art teachers for providing us with this very alluring backdrop. We express our regards to the participants and teachers for their presence. Thanking Vijay sir for the sound system arrangement as well as the housekeeping staff for the seating arrangement. Thank you.